Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in today's video we're going to be talking about galaxies. And specifically we're going to be talking about the death of galaxies. Yes, these things that you see in front of you, they have life and in some sense, one day they die. Welcome to What The Math. <laughs> Okay, well, we're not really talking about the death death. Like, it's this thing right here doesn't really have life. And yes, it's not really going to die in the same sense that one day all of the people on Earth will die. But it does have something akin to existence. So, galaxies can be divided into really two types. The blue cloud and the red sequence. Blue cloud refers to something I've covered in the previous video where I've created a new galaxy that became very bright, very, very, very blue and had a lot of stars that have been created. A red sequence, however, would be something similar to what you see right here. So this is a miniature galaxy that contains nothing but red dwarfs that are still alive and white dwarfs that are basically stars that used to be like our sun and lived out their life and became really, really tiny. Uh, but very dense pieces of matter. And in the middle you have the supermassive black hole. These types of galaxies are basically in a sense dead. Because no new stars have been created, and because these galaxies one day will become very dim, very dark, and possibly completely disappear. Now we don't really call them dead though, and we don't call this dying, but we call this quenching. So this galaxy quenching is essentially the kind of a period in galaxy's life when no more new stars have been created, and where all of the stars are basically kind of slowly living out their lives, and all of this one day will disappear. But galaxies are unlike life on our planet can actually resurrect and start producing stars again. Now let's talk a little bit more about all of this by creating a few galaxies and just talking in general about the idea of galaxy quenching or I guess galaxy death and the idea of resurrecting galaxies uh, by various means. So first let's actually talk about how this whole quenching thing happens. Now, one of the most common ways for quenching to occur is when, when um, a bigger galaxy or a more active galaxy, like for example this one right here, interacts with a smaller or less active galaxy and essentially neutralizes its hydrogen. There's uh, several ways of doing that. One of them is by essentially, and let me see if I can actually recreate that here, essentially um, sucking out all of the hydrogen from the other galaxy. We're gonna see if we can create uh, this effect by basically making this particular black hole ridiculously massive and essentially uh, making all of the hydrogen kind of suck into this other galaxy. Okay, well, that's not exactly what I was trying to create. This is a little bit more extreme, but you get the idea. So when the hydrogen from the other galaxy disappears, um, the older or the smaller galaxy will not be able to produce any more stars. The other thing that can happen is galaxy that has um, a nucleus that basically has these two super, super, super um, active jets that propel a lot of energy toward um, these two locations. And if by some chance there is another galaxy located right here, right in the middle of this jet, okay, that totally missed the actual spot where I was aiming, but what I'm trying to do here is place it right here, right in the jet. So if this galaxy is right in the jet, uh, the actual jet will neutralize a lot of nitrogen and once again prevent the star formation. And this by itself actually has a name. This is actually known as galactic strangulation. Basically when one galaxy str uh, strangles the other galaxy, preventing it from forming new stars. And it happens quite a lot in our universe and it's actually been observed many, many times. Um, so there's basically two mechanisms. One is through these uh, really, really highly radioactive and very, very highly energetic jets or any other means uh, that basically make um, hydrogen unable to combine and create new stars, and the other through sucking of that hydrogen into the black hole or into some kind of a supermassive, uh, very highly gravitational uh, body inside another galaxy. But for a typical galaxy that you see uh, right here, basically this is a miniature version of a typical galaxy where stars can be very, very different, and uh, have quite a variety of life in front of them. Anything from blue stars that will go supernova really, really soon to um, red dwarfs that will live for trillions of years. Um, strangulation may not occur, but they'll still one day reach this so-called red sequence and 
essentially quench themselves, they basically die, including our own Milky Way and including our neighbor, the Andromeda. Right now, they're in so-called uh, green stage, basically, they're not really dead yet, but they are slowly reaching the stage where no new stars will be made maybe in a few billion years. But until that occurs, they will obviously be creating some stars. Now, for a galaxy to be quenched, basically it has to have no more hydrogen left to produce new stars. And all of the supernova that may actually occur in this particular galaxy would have to be not powerful enough or I guess not dense enough to produce any more new stars or maybe all of them have to have already initiated and no supernova capable stars should have been left in that particular galaxy. So essentially what I'm doing right now is I'm quenching or killing the galaxy I've just created. I'm making all of the blue and the white stars go supernova I'm, I'm essentially getting rid of any way for this galaxy to create new stars. And after a few billion years, this is what's going to be left. A galaxy filled with nothing but white dwarfs and red dwarfs. Basically stars like our sun that lived out their life and stars that will slowly live out their lives for trillions of years. There's also going to be a lot of black holes, a lot of neutron stars in there, but a lot of them will not be as visible. So for the most part, this galaxy will be relatively dim and uh, relatively hard to see. But something else can actually happen to resurrect this galaxy. And that something else usually is a collision between two galaxies. When Andromeda and Milky Way collide, they might be almost red sequence, they might be almost dead. However, the collision that you're about to see here will actually initiate two things. First, a lot of the leftover gas from both galaxies might mix up and um, create a lot of a lot of energy as it sort of creates friction, a lot of um, particle collisions. And this by itself might actually initiate another stage um, that will create or basically resurrect the two galaxies and um, create uh, another temporarily blue cloud stage where many new stars will be made from the gas that has just mixed up right here. Now, no stars will collide, but the gas will actually clump together and possibly create a lot of a lot of new stars. And at the end of this collision, we'll actually end up with an elliptical galaxy very likely known as Milkdromeda, because that's the only name we came up with it, uh, we came up with so far, and that's the name, because that's the only name we've came up with so far for this unusual collision that will occur something like 4.5 billion years from now. But of course, until that happens, both galaxies, both Andromeda and the Milky Way will essentially use up all of their uh, stellar gas, uh, or interstellar gas, that is, and create all of the possible new stars that they currently are capable of creating. And once that's done, both of them will very, very likely end up as red sequence um, galaxies that will essentially look very dim, have no new star formation, and for the most part, will slowly dim away into non-existence. And if you are okay with waiting a few more billion and trillions of years, you will eventually reach a stage where pretty much all of the galaxies will look very, very similar to each other. At some point, all of them will be barely visible. As you can see right here, there's maybe a few white dwarfs, but for the most part, this entire galaxy consists of mostly black dwarfs, black holes, and possibly a few neutron stars here and there. It is very, very dim, it is almost impossible to see, and this is as quenched of a galaxy as you can kind of imagine. This will happen in many, many, many trillion years in the future, and it's very likely that by then, the universe might not even exist anymore. But hypothetically, this is what a future of a galaxy might look like. And anyway, that's all I wanted to say in this video, and hopefully you learned something from it, and so hopefully now you know something more about the galaxy death, or the so-called galaxy quenching. If you've enjoyed this video, come back tomorrow to learn something completely different about universe, galaxies, space, math, or maybe just play a video game with me. I'll see you guys tomorrow, I'll see you in the next video, space out, thank you, and as always, bye bye. And let's actually go ahead and change these last two white dwarfs into black dwarfs. And here we go. Completely dark, close, post, almost completely invisible galaxy that has no name.
But when you really... But when you look really closely, you'll realize there's actually quite a lot of things going on here. 